Hello to the chicos and the chicas. Today I'm going to show you and tell you what I think is a remarkably effective way to become a better tactician and more importantly a better calculator. So let's dive right into it and let me unveil the big secret. I really like to go on the leeches puzzles and what you can see here, so I'm going to go back to the other uh, page. I'm going to show you the puzzle page and then I'm going to show you the puzzle themes. And here, if you scroll down, 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 there is made puzzles here and you can choose them by number, mating one, two, three, four, five. And what I really think is a great way to exercise your calculating ability and in fact improve it vastly is to do these forced mate puzzles. Now, in my opinion, this is too soon for you to do if you don't have your mate patterns really, really well understood, memorized, and so on. In order to do that, my recommendation for you would be to do this, which is use of uh, boost your chest or build up your chest, depending on which book you have in your hand. There are nine of these guys and they are absolutely sensational. Or you can also go to Chessable and do the Checkmate Patterns Manual, which was written by Crafty Ruff, my fellow author, co-author, in fact, we did a few courses together. Uh, and here with uh, Johnny B, he did the Checkmate Patterns Manual, one of the most successful Chessable course ever. These two, potentially combined, would give you a very firm, a foundation upon which you can build your calculating skills. And once you are done with that, I think it is a good time to jump into these mating free puzzles where you get to practice your calculation skills whilst relying really well on these mate patterns. So let's dive, let's dive into it. And I'm going to show you now how I do this. So this is a mating free and the solution is pretty simple. Check, check, checkmate. Now, I'm solving these usually at a fairly rapid pace and like it or not, but ideally the, the idea would be for you to be able to do them reasonably quickly as well. Now, what really helps me to reduce the speed of the solving drastically is a very, very good solving approach, which is checks, captures, threats absolutely all the way every time. And I know you heard it a thousand times and trust me that most of the times people still don't use it as effectively as they should. So checks, captures, threats, pawn breaks as per Ramesh uh, are the first port of call every single time. Now note how the king is cut off on the sixth rank. So after g5 check king g3, I only had two checks to look at. But after f4, e4 does not have support. Hence h4 first and then e4 is mate. Dansky next. Okay, so this looks like check and then check and then mate. And once again, that is actually the solution. The reason why I managed to solve this so quickly is not because I've seen it before, but because of the solving method in my mind, checks, captures, threats is on point. And even though I had two checking moves to start with, I chose rook h7, uh, not so much out of fluke, but because that move ticks two boxes out of the three because that's a check and a capture and as such that is my priority because that's a super duper super duper forcing move and upon checking the calculation of course rook h7 king h7 queen g6 check no matter where the king goes we have mate on g7 so let's go check check and mate done next um this looks like a bit of a nasty, if I'm not mistaken. A real nasty, actually. This is very unpleasant. Um, I just solved this, but boy, this is, this is a for a mating free, this would uh, cause trouble. And in fact, what had me here to solve the problem was, ironically, uh, pattern, pattern recognition. The idea here is, is that we need to play, so the checks lead to nowhere. The checks lead to nowhere. And so I need to create a situation where I can double up my heavies on the h-file. So I was looking at queen g3 first, but after the rook moves to, let's say, just a random square, queen check here, queen takes check, the king escapes. And then I remembered that there is this mating pattern where you have got two heavy pieces on the h-file, 
and you actually prefer the queen to be in the back so that when the rook goes down there the queen is covering the f2 square so if i play queen h4 no rook move with either rook for that matter will solve the problem of the threatened mate so after queen h4 as much as it's a non-check checks capture threats mate in one threat right there for you so white is really really limited in answers there is no check for white which i already checked and also after the capture of the rook then i can slide in with the queen g3 check followed by queen g2 mate that was a devilish puzzle for a mate in three um okay so this is gonna be check check and mate this is a very very famous mate pattern in fact two mate patterns the arabian mate which is check knight check rook mate here and the other mate pattern i have no idea what it's called when you have got a knight here a rook gives the check and the rook is guarded and the black king is here so the calculation looks like this rook c7 check if king b8 knight c6 check king a8 rook a7 mate i purposely am not using arrows or trying not to anyway because neither should you it helps the visualization which means it's cheating and assuming that all this training is going towards over the board chess it's best if you don't develop bad habits rook c7 check king d8 knight takes e6 check king e8 rook e7 mate done check check mate that was the mate pattern i tried to describe earlier next um no direct mate pattern jumps to mind however this check looks extremely enticing because it lures the defender of the pawn on g7 away so i can go in for the kill so that's how i just developed the candidate move technically i should have looked at queen f5 first i don't want to sound too obnoxious and say that i knew that this had to be correct but that's why i went to this first because this seemed to have delivered a greater punch so rook e7 bishop takes e7 queen g7 check now the king has e8 and e6 and both of them met by queen takes e7 mate if uh, after rook e7 check the king goes to g8 rook takes g7 check bishop takes g7 queen takes g7 and you can see the technique here i'm modeling the correct way to do it you call it out loud and you don't ever call out i go there they go there I, no and the reason why you don't do that because speaking out loud the piece and the square supports the visualization if i say rookie seven check that's an extra feedback to my brain oi dude your rookies on e7 bishop takes e7 that means nothing is guarding g7 so queen takes g7 king e8 queen takes e7 done don't ever calculate i go there they go there i go there very bad habit by the way i should have pointed out that that was guarded um ooh, kiddo okay this looks like what is that mate called again Damiano maybe I don't know these mates guys I'm sorry but as soon as you see a bishop slicing and dicing into a long castle king the first instinct is that uh, yeah there is that mate when the bishop comes down here and then you look for checks check which is a capture two takes bishop check on a3 queen b2 bishop takes b2 mate done and that was 100% pure pattern recognition in fact the reason why i took a little bit longer solving this than i expected it because i actually didn't see the bishop on h7 <laughs> it took me a while from the corner of my eye to recognize that ah there is that dude there all oh, right okay so we have mate here okay next now this doesn't look like a mate pattern per se that i'm familiar with oh this is beautiful it's gonna be knight f7 takes check and the mate so the way how i came to knight f7 here as my primary candidate instead of the double check which by the way technically speaking you should start with that because that's really more forcing but after knight f5 check king g4 if i went queen h3 check the king sort of slips away with g5 so i wanted to cover this square to reduce the king's escaping routes and after knight f7 check king g4 i have queen h3 check now g5 has been covered 
king f4 is the move and then queen f3, which is vaguely a mate pattern I remember that now after queen takes the knight is covering these two squares and so the king has nowhere to escape. Let's see one more. Um, that's going to be a check, check, checkmate. So this is a very, very common mate pattern when the king is embedded between two pawns that are in a diagonal distance. And so if there is a king on c4 and the queen on b5, that means it's a checkmate. So I'm going to go queen d2 check if king b1, b2 is mate. King b3, queen b2 check. And now if the king goes to a4, I have queen b5 mate. And if the king takes on c4, I still have queen b5 checkmate. Let's go. And the idea is, by the way, as I'm doing these, that um, when you are solving them, you should get them, every single one of them right, and reasonably quickly too. Although the speed is not everything, but you will find that the more you do this, the faster and more confidently you calculate. So this one is check, check, checkmate. And the reason why I do it this fast is simply because I have good habits and I am calculating now with obviously a fair bit of experience reasonably skillfully. So queen b7 check, king d8 only move, queen a8 check, knight b8 only move, queen takes b8 mate. And again, check, check, check. So the reason why these exercises are really good for your chess because they hammer the habit into you that you want to kill this position, this opponent, this, this whatever is on the board, this game, you want to go for them, man. It, it basically feeds into that vicious predator-like mentality without which no chess player ever succeeded. And so because of the uh, all mate, you know that there is one. And so there is an initial boost in you that I can, I know I should go for it. And then with that aid, you are going to be able to, you know, find these solutions with a greater success rate and they will feed these outstanding habits. Now I'm going to step it up today. No, actually not. I'm going to do one more mate in free. And in the next video, we are going to tackle the force. So let's see. Last mate in three, um, myriads of discovered checks with the bishop. So the first one I'm going to look at is these guys because they support a check and a check. Or if I went this way, then technically a check and I can't go that way. So I already am visualizing that uh, I would rather force the king this way uh, then uh, th rather this way than this way because obviously towards the corner it's more sheltered. So my number one candidate is bishop d6 check and I immediately find that after both king d8 or king d7 I have queen c7 check, king e8, queen e7 mate, see ya. Easy peasy, check, check, checkmate. So let's do a very quick conclusion about the first uh, video on this uh, how to become a better calculator theme. The first and most important thing is, is that it, it's not absolutely, you know, a, a necessity, but definitely, in my opinion, the right order of doing this is to first make sure that your checkmate patterns are on point. And for that, I've already provided the sources which I think best support you, not the exclusive only ones, but they are two of the best. Once that's done, then you can do the test in those books and courses and then you can open your wings and do some of these exclusively made threats. So you know they are made threats on Lee Chess. I think they are the only ones offering these at the moment. Where not every single one of them will feed into patterns you know, but many do. And so you already know that there is a mate, so you can go for the aggro and you can really practice the checks capture threats. Unfortunately, we didn't have any Oh yeah, we did have one actually, which was a non-checking solution, but still the vast majority is checks all the way. And so those types of puzzles will allow you to boost your confidence as well as your ability to calculate reasonably longer lines at a reasonable pace. And then immediately you will be able to call whether it's solution or it doesn't work and move on. So this, in my opinion, is a really great way to hone your calculating skills not to perfection, but towards perfection at least. On that note, we are going to call it a day now, but I'm going to continue this with meeting fours and fives. 
uh, and we'll see how we go. But I wish you the very best of luck with practicing your calculation. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to sub, to like, to comment, and I will be back with the next video soon. Thank you. Bye.